and will be recorded. It's titled Interesting Resources for Research. And um, so I've tried to um, tie the theme of, of Latinx Heritage Month. So many of these resources have to do with either Latin American history, New Mexico history, uh, I think there's one of Mexican history, so of the region uh, of that nature. Um, if you have any questions or comments, you can use the chat box. Uh, my colleague Susan Bontley will be monitoring that and either she'll stop me or we'll wait until the end to address those. There is my email. Uh, I'll also provide it to you at the end. For those of you that wish to have a bibliography of, of what I'm about to present. And and if not, any questions I can entertain at the end uh, verbally as well is the option. Here we go. Uh, the first website I'm showing you and would like to include in this presentation is this academic library website from the University of Texas in Austin. It's called this, this, this part of the library collection is called the Teresa Lozano Long Institute of Latin American Studies. Um, let me read you a little bit about it. It's designated a Title VI National Resource Center for Latin American Studies and Languages, and is supported by the U.S. Department of Education in providing training and public engagement programs in Latin American area studies and languages. In 2011, LILAS, which is the abbreviation for this library, Establish a partnership with the Nettie Lee Benson Latin American Collection, again at the University of Texas, and became one of the world's premier repositories of Latin American and US Latina, Latino materials. Lilas Benson maintains one of the world's largest collections of digital assets on Latin American studies which includes unique archives in the areas of human rights, indigenous languages, and the first books published in the Americas. So um, I invite you as I show you these websites and resources to explore them more thoroughly. Uh, I have very little limited time in this presentation to do that for you, but I try to highlight um, and on the right of this slide, I've kind of listed some, some unique characteristics of, about this collection. Um, if I can move. So it has a, the picture that I included here in this slide is a, the picture of the digital resources, which is just one section of this collection and listed uh, what kinds of digital resources they have. So they have the Guatemalan National Police Historical Archive, um, Archive of the Indigenous Languages of Latin America. They also participate in this network center and you have some details there about it. Pretty impressive. They have an audio and video section and this first books uh, of the Americas. Uh, going back to early 17th century. So pretty neat websites, I think, for those interested in Latin American research. So that is the University of Texas. This next website <clears throat> is also by the University of Texas, but this time at Arlington. And this website's 
uh, is a specific collection dedicated to the U.S.-Mexico War. So let me read you a little bit about that. So the UT Arlington Special Collections serves as a repository for one of the most comprehensive archives relating to the U.S.-Mexico War in either the United States or Mexico. Uh, I've listed there on the right categories and sections of the collection. Uh, sheet music, newspapers, sermons, etc. You can see those on the right about the project. So a continent divided, which is what this special collection and project is titled, is committed to digitizing primary source materials drawn from the UT Arlington's library special collections. Though fought entirely on soil claimed by Mexico, the war remains very much an American story for historians in the United States. This website, as its title suggests, seeks to address this imbalance, adopting a binational focus to examine the war as part of a larger, more integrated North American narrative. It also seeks to serve two separate audiences, scholars actively engaged in research and teachers looking for ways to engage their students. So it is the largest collection of primary source material on the U.S.-Mexico War. Um, new archival materials as well as biographies and essays are continuously added to the site on a regular basis. So a pretty neat website. Again, this one has that spin for teachers and educators, so I highly recommend those interested in that to take a closer look at this a continent divided. This website is the University of Florida's Latin American Caribbean Collection. <clears throat> Founded in 1951 to support emerging scholarly interests in Latin America and the Caribbean, the Latin American and Caribbean Collection has since grown to become one of the University of Florida's preeminent collection, collections. It now holds approximately a half a million volumes over 50,000 microforms, a large collection of rare books and manuscripts, and a wealth of digital resources, many of which are open access. Um, they, uh, some of the collections specific in this resource, Again, the Latin American and Caribbean Special Collections, microfilm in the Latin American and Caribbean Collection, oral histories from Latin America, Panama and the Canal at the University of Florida, the Cuban American Dream, and some of the uh, research guides, uh, of course, Latin American Studies, Caribbean Research Guides, uh, which include several of the preeminent library resources like JSTOR and WorldCat ProQuest, Latin American Caribbean newspapers and current event resources. Other guides include human rights in Latin America, the native struggle for justice in the Spanish empire, 19th century Brazilian slavery and abolition, uh, modern Caribbean, early, early Caribbean history, tourism, and the Caribbean. So that is the University of Florida. This next one is the Mexican Museum and its association with the Smithsonian Institute, a very respected and popular institution in the United States. They have lots of features in this website. One is one of which is the museum from home aspect where they have a lot of online exhibits they also have an education uh, section dedicated for those wishing to explore those areas, videos. Their mission, their mission is to voice 
the complexity and richness of Latino art and culture throughout the Americas and to engage and facilitate dialogue among the broadest public. So again, uh, Mexican focus with art and culture. That is the Mexican Museum. This next source is uh, American Reads, <clears throat> and it's, it's an association, for lack of a better term, they probably use a different term, I can't recall now, um, where their mission is to promote Spanish, the language of Spanish through the use of reading. So thus books and literature in all those formats so it's to promote Spanish, the use and the reading through libraries, schools, and bookstores. So they have lots of features in this website. One, uh, some of the more um, interesting ones that I found were they have a section on the bestsellers uh, of uh, books, of course, in Spanish, but both in Spain and in the United States. Uh, they have a list of new releases and, of course, reviews, book reviews. So for those interested in, in learning Spanish or teaching Spanish or just exploring Spanish literature, I believe this is definitely a resource to explore. So throughout this week and actually this month with the Latinx Hispanic Heritage Month uh, promotion and activities and programs, I've had a couple of people ask me about, well, how do they trace their family lineage? They heard, they've heard uh, stories, oral histories, et cetera, that they think they're from a certain region or maybe descendants of individuals. Um, we had one yesterday. A lot of the counties and, and places, especially in New Mexico, are named after families. So I thought I'd introduce uh, the local library's genealogy section and resources. So if you do not live in Las Cruces, uh, I advise you to check your local library and uh, see what kind of resources they offer. Uh, sometimes some of these resources are, uh, are marketed. You probably have heard commercials about one or the other where you have to pay to get access. So check your local library to see if they have a, a subscription to that already. And so you as the user can use it. Uh, and I think that's the case at our, our local library here in Las Cruces, Thomas Brannigan. So you go to their website and these are some of the resources. I'm not gonna go through them individually. I just wanted to highlight that this exists and uh, residents, particularly those with a library card, can access some of these resources to do some genealogy. In addition, um, there is a genealogy group or a club. I don't know exactly how they identify it, but they're affiliated with uh, the library and they meet regularly and they too are a great resource for those of you wishing to do um, genealogy research family tree, uh, that, sort of, that sort of thing. So, something to consider. Up, at the, up in Albuquerque at the University of New Mexico, there exists this special collection called the Center for Southwest Research and Special Collections, CSWR. University of New Mexico. Um, they are located at Zimmerman Library on the UNM campus. They have a wealth of library and archival collection documenting the peoples and communities of New Mexico and the surrounding states of the southwestern U.S. and northern Mexico. They hold a wide range of documents, photographs, oral histories, music, recordings, maps, architectural plans and more. 
And so these are just two examples of what they have in this slide. They have the Latin American collections archive there and then the Spanish colonial and Mexican documents. So um, I have uh, a handout that they produce and on it, of course, their website, the phone number, you can call them and ask your uh, research questions and some contact people as well. I did not provide that on this slide, but I'll be glad to provide it to you if you wish. Uh, if you contact me after the presentation, I'll send you all that information. Lots of, lots of great resources there at the University of New Mexico. New Mexico Digital Collections. It's a central search portal for digital collections regarding New Mexico. A service of UNM, University of New Mexico Library, there contains lots of photographs, manuscripts, um, posters, oral histories, videos, maps, books. Some of the more noted resources they uh, illustrate is uh, things related to the statehood of New Mexico, of course, newspapers, waters, which I thought was interesting. So I, I assume, you know, documents, resources related to the water rights or water usage, that sort of thing. The Tony Hillerman portal, a federal music project, and nuclear engineering wall charts. So pretty neat there at the New Mexico Digital Collections. And staying in Albuquerque, if you haven't been there, I highly recommend you to visit the National Hispanic Cultural Center. Uh, they are a division of the New Mexico Department of Cultural Affairs. So they're a state agency. And their mission is uh, preservation, promotion, and advancement of Hispanic culture, arts, and humanities. They have lots of things such as exhibitions, lectures, book readings, performing arts, they have educational programs. They have a Spanish resource center, uh, which is a branch of the Spanish embassy and the Insti in Instituto Cervantes. So, they are located in Albuquerque as a physical building in place, but they also have a website. Uh, please check them out. And here in Las Cruces, we have the New Mexico Farm and Ranch Heritage Museum. Uh, they are an awesome museum. If you have not visited them, I highly recommend it. Of course, their emphasis or focus is on farming and ranching in New Mexico. Uh, once, when you drive in there, you will notice the animals outside. They are part of the museum collection and exhibit. Uh, and they have several or a couple of uh, special days throughout the years where, um, they have festivals about ranching and farming and the animals and stuff like that. But they're also, they also have an indoor museum as well. So they have exhibits. Uh, they are considered an interactive museum. Um, and they have an education component, oral histories, and lots of exhibits on agricultural, agriculture and farming. That is the New Mexico Farm and Ranch. In fact, I think in today's paper, they just hired a new museum director, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, that's good news. Um, congratulations for both of them. So that's New Mexico Farming Ranch. Library of Congress. So Library of Congress, of course, if you did not know, there is uh, probably the world's largest collection of, of resources, books and things. But there are, they are located in Washington, D.C., but they also have a website presence. And particularly this website uh, focuses on those primary resources on the state of New Mexico. 
Uh, and on here, you will find lots of maps and photos, audio clips, newspapers, and a teacher's guide. So that's just one of three websites that I'm going to talk about that are come from the Library of Congress. So let me show you the next one. They also have a Hispanic reading room. Primary access point for research related to the Caribbean, Latin American, Spain, and Portugal. The indigenous cultures of, of the area, of those areas, and peoples related to Hispanic worldwide. And they include the Latinos in the United States. They have lots of research guides. Uh, some of them uh, include American Folk Life, the American Folk Life Center, uh, Hispanic Music of Northern of the Northern Rio Grande, the Zuni Pueblo Storytelling, and they also provide links to podcasts, blogs, and concerts. So again, a wealth of a variety of different resources from this website, the Hispanic Reading Room. And they also, I might add, have experts in the area. I attended uh, a history conference at the first part of the year and uh, I didn't meet her, but I heard her. She was a Latin Americanist, a specialist, a historian, but who worked at the Library of Congress. So I assume she uh, is affiliated with this website or at the very least, of course, the Library of Congress. And I just heard her speak during the uh, conference presentation. It was just amazing the amount of knowledge this person had. So they do have um, excellent staff there at the Library of Congress. The next Library of Congress source that I'm going to talk about is the ones, is this one that focuses on newspapers, the digitized newspapers. And, um, this particular website is focused on the newspapers of New Mexico. So there are lots of them. Uh, I'm not going to list them all. As you can see, the slide does not show them, but there's newspapers from almost every county, if not every city uh, in the state. Um, going back, you know, Alan McGordo going back to the early 1900s. Albert Kirkett going back to the 1880s. You know, there's Carlsbad, Santa Fe going back to 1854. Socorro, 1888. The Mesilla Valley, uh, Las Cruces Sun News was not there, but there was a Mesilla Valley independent that went back to 1879. Las Vegas, 1851. The Rio Grande Republican, again, another Las Cruces newspaper. 1890. So those of you that are doing research uh, know that this too can help you uh, if you're looking for resources that date back that far from newspapers. And right here in our hometown of Las Cruces, the New, uh, New Mexico State University has a Rio Grande historical collection. It is a special collection within the New Mexico Archives and Special Collections Department. Um, I did not include them. They have an email that entertain uh, reference research questions, archives at nmsu.edu. Again, I can provide you with that if you wish at the end. They have research rooms and open stack as well as they produce a blog, a blog where they feature lots of interesting tidbits about their collection. On this slide here, you see some of them already. Uh, the Archivo de Durango, photograph collections, and the Amador trade catalogs. The Archivo de Durango, if you did not know, are actually, I believe, microfilms of um, the archives of the Diocese of Durango, because back in the 17th century, I believe, maybe even further than that, I don't have my dates accurate, but this whole region, uh, did not have, Las Cruces did not have a diocese. It used to belong to the Diocese of Durango. So therefore all the records were kept down there. 
Durango, if you did not know, is a state in Mexico. So uh, I think the story goes, and I could be uh, a little off. Dennis Daly could uh, tell you better. But uh, several years ago, there was a group from New Mexico State Library that was allowed to go down there and, and microfilm many of these records. So it is really a unique collection to have uh, many uh, many collections that date that back, especially church records, sometimes can be very difficult to share or access. So there is the Archivos de Durango, but again, other uh, collections exist here as well. We had a presentation earlier this week by one of the staff members here, uh, Jennifer uh, Olguin, and she talked about the Armijo family and used many of the resources found in this collection. So for those that are interested in New Mexico history or more specifically in the Sierra Valley, this is definitely a resource to explore. And last but not least, excitement. Excitement. This is a project from the National Endowment of the Humanities. Um, they offer a teacher's guide, uh, which are created during each of the National Endowment of Humanities summer seminars or their institutes. And in these teacher guides, they offer lesson plans for K through 12 classrooms and think pieces on events and experiences across Hispanic history and heritage. Some of the topics they touch on are include roots of Hispanic culture, which you see on the right-hand side, historical and cultural legacies, Hispanic cultural literature, lessons from the Chihuahuan Desert, Latino Americans documentary resources, K through 12 lessons for Hispanic history and culture and related websites and resources. That is excitement. Like all things, like all good things, it must come to an end. I hope you have enjoyed this presentation and learned a thing or two. Again, if you'd like to have a bibliography of everything that I've shared, or if you have any questions, there is my email. Please contact me. If you have questions regarding some of those specific sites, for example, UNM or New Mexico State, I can get you in touch with the appropriate personnel at those places as well. Thank you all for joining us. We have one more presentation this afternoon at 2 p.m. Hispanic mathematicians. Thank you all. Oh, are there any questions? Yes, Jose. There is one question from Spencer. He said, are there any fees or restricted access for the Library of Congress websites or CSWR collection? Not that I know of, not that I know of. Um, no, you're not gonna find everything on the website. That I know I can say. They just, uh, whatever they digitized is what you'll find freely on the internet. But for many of the things, uh, you're gonna have to go in person. I did an internship at the Library of Congress a couple years ago and, and uh, they have all the materials there. They just do not loan them out and obviously, they cannot have everything online. It would be just humongous. But as far as fees are concerned, I don't think so. Anything else? That was it. Well, thank you all for joining us and supporting DACC Libraries Latinx Heritage Month. Have a good day. <laughs>